the origin in Rn will be the point O whose components are all zeros. Also, if I have any two points, P and Q, in Rn, I can draw a vector starting at P and ending at Q, and that vector will denote by PQ with an arrow on top. So if I have any point, I'm going to define a position vector to be the vector from the origin, from O to P. And you could draw O to P from the origin to the point P. And if we draw it right here, that's going to be called in standard position. All right, so let's play with these PQs a bit. Um, here in example 1.1.5, I have three points. I have A, I have B, and I have C. Let me place them like this. I want to know what happens if I take AB, that's the vector from A to B, and I add sorry, BC to it, vector from B to C. Well, if you look at this blue and this red vector, they're already tip to tail. So they're in a perfect position to add. And what you'll get is this third side of the triangle. So this is AB plus BC. But if you look at the picture, AB plus BC goes from A to C. And so it is the vector AC. And this makes sense if you think about displacement. If I go from A to B and then from B to C, the total displacement is the same as going from A to C directly. The change in position is the same. All right, let's look at this a bit more. If I have AB here, then we could form two different vectors. We can look at AB. And we could look at BA. Now, AB and BA have the same length, but they have opposite direction. And so BA is minus AB. So if I switch the order of um, the points, then it flips the vector. We get its inverse. To make this easier, um, I'm going to give you a formula for all of these vectors. So let's say I have the coordinates of the point. So P is going to have A1, A2, AN. Q is going to have B1, B2, BN. So if I want the vector OP, that's the vector from the origin to the vector P, which has components A1, A2, a n. So my change in x was from 0 to a1. So my change in x is a1. And then my change in y is a2, and so on. So the vector op is the vector whose coordinate is a1, a2, a n. So at this point, I want to answer this question at the bottom. What do you notice about the vector OP and the point P? Well, the position vector OP has the same components as the point P. And in some sense, talking about this position vector is a way of taking a point and bringing it into the world of vectors so we can do operations and products and all of this on it. So here is OP. Now the same is going to be true for OQ. It's going to have the same component as Q. So I'm going to get B1, B2, and BN. So let me draw that one too. Let's put it over here. This is OQ, and this goes to Q. And let's put OP. Now, the third side of that triangle, I'll put it in purple, that's the vector PQ. 
That's the vector PQ. It goes from P to Q. The two different ways you can come up with coordinates from it. Uh, first of all, you can think of the change in X, change in Y. So if I want to go from P to Q, I want to go from A1 to B1 in X. And so that's a change of B1 minus A1. If I add B1 minus A1 to A1, I'll get B1. Same thing for the second component and same thing for the nth one. But the triangle gives you a different way of seeing PQ. Um, let me do it in orange. But if I start at P and I want to get to Q, I could actually go this way to O and then this way to Q. And so this tells me that PQ, I mean, you could think of it as PO plus OQ, and PO is minus OP. So let me write this as OQ minus OP. So if you want a vector PQ, you can just subtract the position vector of Q and the position vector of P. 